Hi everybody, Dave Cross again. I think I have time for one more this morning and I uh, wanted to take a look at our example that we had used yesterday, the uh, two examples actually, that we had written to assign the next IP address and then to get the block information to pull back the gateway. And now I wanted to extend that even a little bit further and kind of introduce another API that as we assign that address information that there might be details that is stored or are stored in the user definable fields and the capability of those fields to present things back like points of contact, uh, maybe locational fields, geograph uh, geography and so forth. And so in my example, um, I went ahead into my container uh, for my sites. All right, and set up some additional fields that would allow me to set up a street address, um, city state zip, and some other you know, details there, but then also some points of contact information. And that information might entail who is responsible for the site for uh, support or technical support, etc., which might be helpful for the administrator if they were trying to assign an IP and had questions. So all of this information we might then want to extract that when we assign the IP, we also want that block detail and also the container. So the first thing we want to do is, again, look at the Swagger UI so we can determine what is the syntax and what do we need to do to get the container information that the IP address is assigned to. So the first thing to note is the container that this IP is assigned is actually pulled out of the subnet details. So when we created uh, the IP and got the block, we pulled out the container, and we're gonna use that to carry it forward to call into the container by name. And really what we need to have here is just simply the container name, and it can be the fully qualified name, uh, hyphen or slash denoted or delimited, or it can be just a simple name, uh, like in this one here, ATL-VO-0928. Now the result of this is, we want to get the um, structure for the container, which includes all types of information about the site, but we really just want the user-defined fields here um, in this example. And these are going to have those contact fields, which will help for the end user and the support when they need it to contact me. So uh, these aren't actual numbers. <laughs> uh, the email is real, uh, so feel free to contact me there. So we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and mimic that. So what we need to do is um, I basically just copied the curl again. And like in the other example we had set up, I created a get container so I could test these scripts uh, before we actually put it into our add next IP. And again, I'm editing this elsewhere, but I'm just gonna look at it. So um, what I had done in here, I went ahead and just used my implemented uh, token headers, you know, since that's a template that I'm going to use just for this command. And I stripped out the authorization, uh, authorization bearer and just put in the um, field or the, the variable we're going to use. And then I'm going to capture as the container name the container variable, which we're going to pass into the get URL for the container. And then we're going to use that JQ command to extract only the user-defined fields structure of the JSON returned. And we're going to then pretty print it and uh, run it through JQ one more time. Okay, so we should be able to test this and see what kind of result we get. Again, using our login. And I'm going to specify the short <laughs> name of the container so I don't have to do this manually. And, and that's what I expected. So we expect that this is an array of fields. And uh, the processing or scripting program that we're using to call this could you know pull these details out further. So let's go ahead and take a look at our add next IP script that we were adding all of these details to. And I went ahead and cut and paste the curl command for the container so that we could go out and get that using the variable. And the container variable I had to modify a little bit to add a sed to it and remove any of the double quotes, single quotes around the return values. Uh, because from the JSON, they are double quoted there. And then um, once we have the contain value, which should be the container structure, I'm going ahead again being lazy and echoing this out and then piping it into JQ and pulling out the user-defined field. And I'm assigning that to the UDF variable. 
And then I'm just echoing the UDF again being lazy. And it basically does what we need to do. And so we'll go ahead and test that and tap login. And then we're going to use the same subnet. And this time we still only need the subnet address since it will do all of these other commands for us. And now we've extracted uh, quite a bit of detail that can now, again, be presented differently, you know, maybe be formatted and presented to the end user through an email or some type of um, closed ticket procedure or even pass back into, you know, their ticketing queue. So uh, I thought maybe that would be helpful for some, you know, again, looking to pull additional details and really just, again, exploring how these different commands can be chained together to build a workflow. And um, I'm going to go there eventually where I'm going to show you our workflow manager and orchestration tools that kind of do all of this for you in a drag drop way. But uh, interesting to know how to do this. So work through the utilities and the examples. And uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Thanks again. And uh, have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow.